essential and metabolic fatty acids from packed red blood cells. Let's take a look at the essential and metabolic fatty acid markers from packed red blood cells. We begin on the top left with the omega-3 fatty acids, and you see them all listed. But notice on the bottom right we have this omega-3 index. The omega-3 index uh, in the literature really provides great insight into the need for omega-3 supplementation. In the literature, the omega-3 index should be between 8 and 10, ideally. Less than 4 would be a serious consideration for omega-3 support. We calculate the omega-3 index by looking at the top left, again, at the EPA at 1.05, and the DHA at 4.6. The sum of those two is how we got that 5.7 finding. So there is some room for improvement for omega-3 support for this patient. The omega-9 fatty acids are generally judged through oleic, which looks reasonably strong here. I don't typically mind a little bit of an increase in omega-9s. Remember, they come from olive oil, avocado, and do have some anti-inflammatory qualities. For the saturated fatty acids, I'm basically going to look at the very bottom of the page, the overall percent of saturated fats. Here at 39.1, if anything, a little bit on the lower side, we do need saturated fats in our diet. The omega-9 fatty acids are on the top right. And when I look at these, I want to get a closer feeling for both the arachidonic acid and DGLA. So, Let's take a look at the next page to get a look at both the anti-inflammatory and pro-inflammatory nature of omega-6 fatty acids. The omega-6 family is on the right side of the page. It begins with the linoleic acid at 15.3 and then converts into gamma linolenic. I know that looks like a Y, that's a gamma, via delta-6 desaturase enzyme, the blue arrow. The gamma linolenic, or GLA, converts into DGLA, dihomogammalinolenic acid, at 1.32. Now, DGLA is significant in that it's an omega-6, but it's an anti-inflammatory. DGLA leads us to the arachidonic acid at 15. It's arachidonic acid that, when elevated, creates a cascade of inflammation. That's the one we want to keep moderate to low normal. We do need arachidonic acid for cell viscosity, but we want to keep it in check, whereas we want to see the DGLA here at 1.32 again, uh, which is anti-inflammatory. So my goal on this page basically is to keep the DGLA in the green and keep the arachidonic acid under control. In order to increase my DGLA, I need to use GLA because DGLA can't be supplemented. So in this case, I would think about that second box, the GLA, you see in small letters, Evening Primrose, Barrage, Black Current, those are all GLA sources that I would provide for this patient. I might also consider some of the nutrient cofactors for the enzymes, like the Delta-6 desaturase and elongase that you see on the center portion of the page. Our key points for the essential metabolic fatty acids are omega-3 fatty acids function to lower inflammation. DGLA is an anti-inflammatory omega-6 fatty acid. Arachidonic acid is a pro-inflammatory omega-6 fatty acid. Thanks for listening. I'm Stephen Goldman, a medical education specialist at Genova, and I'll see you on the phone.